Two, we're going to integrate z bar over the path going uh, from the origin to z equals 1 along a and then from z equals 1 to uh, z equals 1 plus i along b. Um, but um, unlike video 1 or part 1, we're here we're going to do it by parameterizing. Okay, cool. So let's get started. So to start, we see that um, what we're going to do is write z of t equals um, x of t plus i times y of t. So our um, normal uh, x plus i y is now a function of t, right? And so on a, right, along a, um, we're going to do the following, which is we're going to let z or t, sorry guys, we're going to let t range from zero to one, um, and then uh, we're going to note that x of t or x is simply t and y is zero. Um, so that would mean that z, which is x plus i y, is simply um, z is simply equal to x plus i y, and x is t, and y is zero, so just t. So uh, z is t means then that z bar is also just t, and that dz is equal to dt. Cool. That's on a. Now on b, on this vertical line. We note that x is equal to 1, um, and then y is uh, t this time, right? And just as before on a, on, along b, we're going to let t range from 0 to 1. Um, so since x is 1 and y is t, uh, z is going to be, um, and let me note that t is, again, um, going from 0 to 1. But yeah, z is going to be x, which is 1, plus i, y, but y is t, so x plus um, plus it. And then that it means z bar is um, 1 minus it. And then dz is uh, is equal to i dt. Right? Uh, since this is z, dz will be i dt. Right? Okay, cool. All right. So as we said um, in part one, the integral over c is the same as the integral over a plus the integral over b. And so uh, we're going to follow um, that. Um, okay, cool. Now, so that would mean that we can rewrite our integral here as the following, which is um, that it's the same as the integral over a, but the integral over a is now parameterized, so we're going from 0 to 1, um, and uh, that's of the variable t. And on a, we said that z bar is t and dz is dt. So we just have t dt on a. That's it. Yeah? Okay, cool. So we're done with the integral along a. And then plus the integral along b is, um, again, going from 0 to 1 because we've parameterized with t again, but uh, 0 to 1. Um, and this time, though, z bar is 1 minus i t. So we have 0 to 1 of 1 minus i t. And then times... Uh, dz, which is i dt. So dz is i dt. Cool. So what does this mean? This means, well, from this integral, which we've done in part 1 um, with x and y instead of t, uh, we know that we've got a 1 half, right? Okay, no need to show the details. And then here on this part, uh, we're going to distribute the i dt to these two terms and then um, compute the two integrals that will result. So we'll have 0 to 1 of, and it's going to be i dt times 1. So it's just going to be 0 to 1 of i dt. Um, and then uh, plus the integral from 0 to 1. Ooh, sorry, don't like that integral sign. 0 to 1 of, uh, this is going to be i times negative i. So that's 1 times t and dt. So just t dt. Okay, cool. Uh, deja vu. That guy is the same as this guy. So, and this is going to have the integral i, right? Because um, we're going to get i times t evaluated from 0 to 1. So we've got 1 half plus i uh, plus 1 half, uh, which is going to tell us that we've got 1 plus i, just as we found in part 1. And that should be the case because we didn't change our path. What we said in part 1 is that when we change the path 
of how we go from zero to one plus i. So when we, in the next part, um, do the integral over the diagonal, we're gonna find that the answer is different, which should not be the case if the function we were integrating was analytic. But this function here is not analytic, which is why um, even if you have the same endpoints, if you take a different path, you get a different answer. Yeah, cool, all right, so this is one plus i. All right, um, keep watching.